Okay, so today we have on Emilia Rojecki, big time player, NC State, and we're going to be doing an interview and getting to know more about you, and it's super exciting. Would you like to chat in a thing, say what's up? Hello, that's all I have to say. There we go, that's all we need, that's all we need. So we're going to be taking a look into your career out here, why you chose to come to college in the US and what your plans are for after. But we're just going to start off with a little bit of your background information for your junior mm -hmm. career. I still remember when we played, uh, was it was it under 14s? <laughs> I don't laugh. <laughs> under 14s, I think it was, County Cup at Nottingham. I yeah. had a wobbler. I think I had a huge meltdown. But I think even in those early days there was something special about your timing. I have never seen someone time the ball so crisp. Thank you. My coaches never say that about me. So, you know, at least somebody said it. Yeah, well, I don't know how they can't because, like, wow, the timing <laughs> is crisp. But you've had a pretty good junior career. You represented Great Britain at the European 16 Under Junior Championships and the 16 Under European Summer Cup in 2018. Mm -hmm. You were invited to compete at the British Tour Masters, where you reached the semis, big time. And then you won four Grade 2 British Tours and one Grade 1 British Tour event in 2019 to earn a top spot in the leaderboard. And for people that um, are not from England, that's pretty. That's a big deal. That's a big deal to get invited to the British Tour Masters and then to win some Brit Tours like that. That's like that's That's pretty banging. So I suppose my question to you is, with such a successful junior career, what made you want to come to the US and what did you look for when you were looking at colleges? One of my reasonings is that it's not the best reason. <laughs> so I vividly remember I went, to, we're just talking about sixth form. I was in sixth form. I must have been before maybe my end of my first year and people were talking about personal statements and they were like, you got to write a personal statement, you got to pick your course, whatever. I had zero clue when I tell you I had no idea mm -hmm. I took biology psych PE what was I going to do with those three no clue so <laughs> everyone was talking about personal statements talking about you know I'm going to read this book so I put, put it in my personal statement I'm going to write this whole story did I have a clue no so I went to my teacher and I was like I do not know what I want to do with my life mm -hmm. and he was like have you thought about going to college and I was like do I have to write a personal statement? And he said, no. So you know what? That had already solved me. I was already halfway there purely on the fact I didn't have to write a personal statement. Okay, yeah. And then I was in Scotland with my dad at an ITF and a coach came up to him and gave him a little card. And she was like, you know, if your daughter ever wants to come to college, give me a call. And my dad saw that as my way out and was like, right, I can get you out of the house. Off you go. Don't have to worry about you anymore. You're going to college. So that kind of kick-started my interest in college. And obviously, I was in England. You don't really know. I had no clue what college was. I'm yeah, no, no idea. It's mm -hmm. not very, you know, it wasn't a big thing, especially for four years ago, four or five years ago. Mm. No clue. Um, so I kind of had to educate myself on that. Um, and then from there, the recruitment process started, which, as you know, is <laughs> long. Yeah, but I mean, did you... <laughs> Were you looking at anywhere in particular? So you kind of, did you do this all yourself or did you go through an agency? Um, I had a guy that helped me, Dan. Um, he went to Millfields. Right. Um, and he was kind of just starting out with it. So he'd been to college himself. Um, and I really liked him because he was like really honest. You know, mm -hmm. he was just, he told me, he explained the whole process to myself, my parents, um, kind of discussed the college system. Uh, and then from there he just sent out a video I took a video at Nottingham Tennis Centre there we go shout out what a, place. <laughs> what a place um there and I think he just kind of sent it to all the coaches and was like look do you have any questions let me know um so then I started talking to a few obviously still then I had no clue what these colleges were. I saw like the old texts and like I didn't know any of these schools um but my coach was quite involved at the time and my parents quite involved and um from there I mean you talk to so many people I just I remember having phone calls at 6 p.m at night like at dinner with my parents just talking to a coach about something oh wow I don't know who that school was who knows um and then when it came to visits obviously then 
I think at that point I only had three schools really that I still had scholarships because I did leave it quite late as well oh really Mm -hmm. I mean I think I started looking maybe September and then I took visits in kind of November December time oh wow it was quite quick quick. and obviously quite a few schools had already given away scholarships so Mm -hmm. sucks for them yeah Mm -hmm. sucks for them right yeah okay yeah (laughs) so um and then I took that was actually my first time going to America it was my visits oh yeah 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. so it was fun nice trip very intense I took three visits when I saw colleges I was like whoa this is not what I expected um and the three I visited were quite were very different, um, very different parts of America, you know, completely different conferences. Mm-hmm. Um, and then NC State, yeah, that was my last visit. And then I think by the end of my visit, I think my decision was already made. It was just a case of if the coaches actually wanted to. Oh, really? <laughs> think, so by the time yes. you finished at NC State, you were like, I just want to go here? Yes. Oh, 100%. What was it about NC State that you were like, okay... This is like the perfect fit for me. I mean, the coaches, the first time I spoke to them, I spoke to Dave first, I think. And I just, you know, I really got on with him. He's really honest, which I really appreciated. Um, I spoke to Simon a lot. He has very long phone calls. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's just like kind of the way they spoke. Um, I fully like they like I fully believed like everything they were saying. It was like. I don't know, the knowledge that they had, it just kind of blew me away. Um, and then I visited and I was with my dad, actually. Mm-hmm. And he he commented, like, you know, I feel like you'd be... He was like, I feel like I would trust you to like, come here. Like, you'd be safe. Like, I wouldn't have any worries. Kind of the other places, he's like, I don't know if I would want you to come here. Like, But he was kind of like the first time we landed in rally and we kind of drove around he was like you know what I think you like I would love for you to come here and kind of his blessing was quite big for me because um, my parents have been quite involved with my tennis and I appreciate kind of the time they've put in mm-hmm. um so it was nice for him to say like you know off the bat like I you know this this is a college for you um and then the visit and then I saw kind of like the facilities I saw the practices and I was like sold oh wow then, so it was very it wasn't it wasn't like even in my mind it wasn't a decision like do I go here I was like no I want to come here yeah and then it was then it was in the coach's hands you know it's up to you guys and and before you even came out to America it sounded like you kind of had a a real open mind to it and you're just like all right whichever one or were you like okay it has to tick this box this box this box or we just kind of like I'll just see how I feel I mean again I just I think because I didn't really know much about college, I was pretty open um, kind of to anything. Also, I'd I'd been in school my whole life, so I kind of had that balance, you know. I hadn't really travelled much as a junior either, so I didn't really, in my mind, I just kind of wanted somewhere where I trusted the coaches. That was a big thing for me. Um, and somewhere where I'd feel safe, because I feel like coming from England like to America is a big it's a big change. Yeah, it's a little bit of a culture shock, I'd say. Ooh, it is a culture shock. Um, <laughs> four years and I am still in that culture shock. But... <laughs> so, like, you know, it was, I think, somewhere... Rally isn't full American. It's oh, really? enough. Oh. No, not as much as I think other places I could have gone to. So yeah. I think that was a nice balance. Mm-hmm. It's a nice... It's a great city. Yeah. Um, it's a nice balance, like... We're really close to downtown, but then, you know, the campus is great. Like, it's a great size. Um, The courts are, like, five minutes from where I live. Because oh, it's great okay. because I'm not a morning person at all. So oh. I roll up bed and I just mm-hmm. get my coffee and go to the courts. <laughs> if it was a 20-minute drive, I don't think I would be, I would not be at practice at 9am. Um, <laughs> so it's very convenient. It's just, it's nice. I just, I think it's, you know, it was a perfect fit for me. Well, that's amazing. Well, that mm. was, yeah, thanks for that. Thanks, that was, that was really interesting. Because I know, like, a lot of people, uh, it's kind of like, they have their minds set on something, and they're like, okay, I'm going to go there, and that's it. And they aren't really willing to explore other options. Whereas you were kind of, you kind of just felt it out, and kind of felt like, yeah. what, 
you and I feel like sometimes people have the misconception of just like they have it, such a big expectation on someone yeah. and then you go and visit it and it's it doesn't meet your expectations and then it's like well I'm a bit disappointed but mm. I've kind of sold myself on this already whereas you know the recruitment process people aren't being 100% honest with you and you kind of have to be very wary of coaches and kind of, you know, you have to kind of take everything with a pinch of salt. And then when you see it on a visit, they can't hide anything. And that's, I think, when you see everything for how it is. And then also you can interpret it. Because obviously everyone's going to have diff- kind of different fits and they, they're they looking for different things. So I 100% would tell people to visit. When people tell me they don't visit, red flag. Look, I'm going to be honest, I didn't visit. I didn't visit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't visit. Well, I just, I just went. For okay, it. Hawaii is very far, though. You know what? Though? I actually started off in a, a D two. Oh, you went to Tyler. No, I started off in a D two school in West Virginia, actually. Yeah, West Virginia. Yeah, no, I know. Because I didn't play for a while, so I'm, I'm finding this very interesting. Your whole process that you went through is like you had some big school yeah. reach. I mean, I'm not surprised, but like, yeah, you sounded. Sounds incredible, and I've seen NC State's facilities, and yeah, mm-hmm. it's really nice out there, and it looks amazing, and I'm glad it was like the right fit for you, and you're enjoying it. Yeah, I mean, it was also. After when did you go? Did you go to, just before COVID? Oh, sorry, did you? No, I just went... before... That's actually a great question. I actually, I went in the spring, of 2020. I think. Oh, oh, okay. Think, yeah, because mine was a bit crazy because obviously I signed. Yeah. And then obviously on my visit, I met Anna and Adriana, who are two program greats. And um, in my visit, I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to be here with you. And then obviously COVID happened. They got their fifth year. Every, suddenly, like the whole dynamic changes. You've got an expanded roster. You know, everything is different which was kind of crazy for me because I was expecting to join this team where, you know, the seniors would leave, whatever. And then I come there and I'm spending time. I mean, I had an unbelievable year with Anna and Adriana and I'm forever Mm -hmm. grateful that they were there because they taught me a lot, but it was definitely a different, like COVID was a real curveball in there as well. Yeah. I think it really did affect college tennis and like all college sports. And it's, well, I don't have a fall. People Uh forget this. (laughs) all these people that got a fifth year I didn't get a fall I was just blessed do you know how long I spent in quarantine I think I legit my kids joke about this all the time I yeah. think I spent half my freshman semester in quarantine did you wow. I got contact traced twice uh, and when I came to America yeah. I had to quarantine I got contact traced a day before I was supposed to fly home for Christmas so what did how, did you just have to wait it out there or so I quarantined, I changed my flights and I flew home later, but I got inconclusive. Oh. I genuinely, in my mind, I was preparing myself to spend Christmas in isolation. I was like, this is not the freshman semester I was in. Ex- I was in when I was Yeah, isn't it? That would have been miserable. Was, and the place they had us in was, oh, it's like a prison cell. Was that was actually right? a proper crazy time to feel like thinking about it. Like it was so... Now I look back, mm. oof. Don't know how I got through that. I know well, you did it. You did it though, and that's yeah. Wow. I look at the freshman now, and they're for, for <laughs> complaining. But you have it great. I had it all. I was in quarantine my entire semester. Don't complain about anything. You tell them as a senior. I feel like you can say that sort of stuff. That's what I mean. I can. That's what I mean. Anyway, so you're at NC State now, and mm-hmm. you're studying human biology. Now, I think this makes you better than all of us <laughs> <laughs> who might have, for example, I'm I'm doing business administration. Uh, uh-huh. but you took the you took a tough route and went human bio and you spoke just like briefly then about your first time experience then, how you know, fifth year and COVID. Also, was there any struggles with the transition and being in a new place? Because you said it was your first time ever going to America. Obviously, super different from England. And Mm -hmm. any issues there? And I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot, I have to admit. I mean, yeah, the change, especially being an 18-year-old, you know. Yeah. yeah. People don't value that kind of, you know, you're, you're leaving home you know you're moving away especially for us it's a long flight home people forget that people are i'm going home for spring break Mm, 
that okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I think that is it's huge um the culture shock definitely huge um I mean for my year we went from being you know in lockdown to then you know being thrown into a new campus but then it was also kind of strange because it was you know online classes Mm. didn't have to go to class and then halfway through my semester I think they sent all the students so the athletes could stay but the students had to go home so then you're on a campus where it's like you know it's like 10 people it's not college experience that you would expect you know like football games Mm. didn't get to experience as freshmen had no clue what that was um so it was it was different and I think people don't sometimes forget that freshmen are 18 years old you know that is a huge risk for them to be taken away from your family to then be thrown in with girls that you know you have to spend a lot of time with Mm. and also have a lot of different personalities Mm -hmm. and I think people you know it's very easy to overlook that and then you're expected to you know time management huge Mm. Mm-hmm. I've seen that with our freshmen they definitely you know it's a struggle because you don't you don't value it you're like oh I'll be fine you know mm-hmm. um I think time management is huge and then also the pressures of practicing mm-hmm. you know you're suddenly thrown in those expectations this whole new dynamic mm-hmm. it shocks me every time I come back every semester the dynamic is just like completely switched yeah and then it takes about two weeks to get used to it and then it's kind of back to normal again but it is I think there are a lot of changes that freshmen are just expected to pick up like that um yeah. and it is it's, it's, it's incredibly hard you know you but it is like uh, hmm? did you struggle with that because I think like going from a junior career where it is well just tennis itself is a very individual sport and I think what makes college tennis so special is that team aspect but obviously coming in as a freshman like you said and it's you come in there's people that have been there for a lot of time and like it's a lot of different personalities and you have to kind of get along well well not have to but you should really and you spend a lot of time with them yeah did you struggle with that were you still kind of like well I do things this way or how was it I don't know if Covid was a good thing or a bad thing because I kind of got thrown in gently oh okay yeah yeah obviously then I was in quarantine didn't see anyone and then practice was kind of like i it was it was kind of a slower transition um for me compared to like the freshmen this semester who have just kind of been thrown in yeah um, which I think did help but then I do kind of feel like I missed out on some of the kind of college you know full college freshman experiences which I mean I just now I look back I'm like my coach was say this all the time freshmen think they have no time you do feel like you have no time but now I look back and I think actually I probably could have done a little bit more with my time um but yeah I think the COVID transition did kind of help because it was kind of slow practice was you know we didn't have any matches either uh, yeah, 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 yeah. the full schedule god we played the spotlight tournament here it's like five yeah. matches in three days <laughs> yeah just poof, off you go god I'm shattered yeah yeah I can imagine yeah it is you know the fall the fall is also a weird time because you're playing for a team but you're not in that team environment you're kind Mm. of on the court on your own there's a lot going on Mm. but I do think that does help I don't know how this new and still blazing the fall is going to help some of these people because I think it's quite nice you are in that environment but you haven't got the whole pressure of the team result but yeah. you are still kind of getting a taste of college so it yeah. is quite nice yeah That's interesting um, thank you for that mm. I was wondering this is the great question because when you guys came out to Hawaii we were all like my gosh what do these girls do every day <laughs> because gosh. You guys all came out and you guys look, yeah, super strong, obviously a very successful program. So mm-hmm. what does a day in the life consist of for you? Like, and you mentioned here time management skills is something that you've kind of learned and really yeah. appreciate the longer you've been there. But what is a day in the life or a week consist of for you? I, t- I mean, our days, days pretty much look the same. I thought senior year, Nice classes, easy, a lot of time. No. Easy. No, I can't even imagine. <laughs> I have 
<laughs> mess it up. I have no time. Um, so obviously we're competing now in the spring. So normally conference matches will play Friday, Sunday. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, and then obviously if we're traveling, we'll probably travel if it's far, maybe a Wednesday evening, normally Thursday morning. So obviously classes we we tend to have classes in the morning i have classes at 8 30 to 1 tough times i know i know yeah yeah Yeah. um and then we'll kind of we'll lift at 1 30 and then practice at three um Mm -hmm. and then we have different things that we bike twice a week three times a week depending on what matches we're playing um and then we lift two, three times a week, depending on what the schedule looks like. Obviously, we have off days on a Monday if we've competed on the Sunday. Um, and then we kind of throw some individuals in there if we have time. I don't have time. Um, but then you kind of have to, you know, throw in the kind of like sports med side of that, the recovery. There's a lot to do. Very little time. You spoke very nicely there. It sounds very, very hectic. So you bike. Does that mean you're actually going to go on a bike or you're going on the spin bike? No, 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 no. Spin bike, spin bike, spin bike. Heart rate monitor on, spin bike. We've done it. Do you like those sorts of things? I've done a spin bar classes a few times. Cycle bar is what it's called. No, it's not for me. Not for me. I don't enjoy that stuff. I don't like running. Couldn't run. If you told me to run, I'd run the bike. running? Who is into running? Let's be honest. (laughs) No, we ran once as a freshman and I think my coach was that scarred that he just never did it again. <laughs> genuinely. <laughs> genuinely. It's I awful. Just, well, to be fair, biking, that's not bad. I feel like it's less less strain on the knees, you know. Yes, they older. did use to run track and then I think some of the players, not naming names, Alana Smith, okay. had some knee problems and yeah. you know, they kind of veered off from that. But it is it's extremely structured. Um so it's very easy. You know, you're given, like, you do this and this, and it's oh. very easy to understand. And then you can go and do it on your own, you know, over winter break, summer break, take the heart rate monitors, go home, do it ourselves. It's very, makes you very self-sufficient, which I think in life is very helpful. Yeah, that is, I mean, do, do you do it when you go home and stuff? Mm-hmm. You're on walk, like, in my garage, you know? Wow, so, getting it in at all times, respect, yeah. <laughs> respect. Well, you got to be, you know? No, I mean, that's that's actually very impressive. But it sounds like your routine is it's pretty it's pretty intense. So you have classes for a lot of the day, and then you practice, and then you have your lifts and all that. And you mentioned there that you get your off days. What does a recovery day look like for you? Well, unfortunately, I have class on a Monday, which oh my gosh, wow, yeah. So we are very fortunate to get massages um on our team so off days nice massage keith shout out to keith he saves me my body is in one piece because of that man oh shout out keith yeah yeah that i do like a lion i'm not gonna lie mm. i do try to sleep for as long as possible mm. i go to class 11 when i have class 11 45 till like 2 45 i know see any classes what can you do um recovery bike we do and then I just I just try and relax I, I normally that's my day you know like laundry clean everything yeah I'll be set really for the that relaxing do you not think it's not it's, it's not. not no yeah the most time I have is probably the day between matches like when if we play at home Friday and Sunday the Saturday because we'll practice yeah. in the morning and then the rest of the day that is probably the most relaxing day I have Monday not an off day. Don't know why they call it an off day. Not an off day. I mean, I, I found that even on those days where it's like, okay, go and enjoy yourself. It's like I still wake up super early and I'm like, okay, I've yeah. got to do my laundry. Mm-hmm. I've got to do this. I've got to catch up on all this other stuff that I've missed. And it's like, it's class is an off day, but I really struggle with just being like, it's being not. able to sit there, you know, and be no, like, no, you're just playing catch up for everything yeah 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 yeah. facts facts. you never do catch up i've come to that conclusion you're always you know yeah Yeah, you never fully catch up but it's okay because everyone is going through that so yeah that's true that's true that's true (laughs) the nc state 
mm-hmm. how would you describe the culture within there because I mean when you joined it was it's always been a good program but now it's really accelerated into being like one of the best programs in the country and uh-huh. it's quite a quite a fast rise I'd say like um yeah considering last I mean we do this like, every year we have a nice goals meeting yeah and we do, like a presentation on like the history because I think it does oh, put wow. into perspective like especially for new players um yeah. like how like we always go over the ACC record like our ACC record was bad oh was and it really oh wow it used to be like one in 11 like oh, not that long ago and then when Simon came Simon Enshaw the man he mm-hmm. turned everything around so it is it is I think it's very easy to you look at NC State and you think you know top 10 top 10 top five we should be five but, there we go yeah <laughs> You know, it's, I think it's very easy to forget kind of what came before that. And you we we get it a lot when we play teams like UNC, Stanford, that have this really long history. Mm-hmm. UCLA, it's, I think, you know, NC State's success has been, you know, in the very recent years. And I think for some people, it's kind of very easy to forget, like, you know, this is not a given that we're going to do great you know it's it's hard we definitely work hard for this mm-hmm. I think it's nice to look back and think okay every year we're improving and it's a nice it's nice to see mm-hmm. um, but yeah I mean if we have a lot of program first I think that's a big thing for us like you know first time like my sophomore year when we qualified for indoors that was the first time that you know we'd made I think semi living indoors so it's a lot of like people forget a lot of these things that we accomplish is very new this is not something like we we do every week you know right. it's it's very new for us um so I think it's nice it's nice to kind of be like re- to remember that um, yeah no definitely I mean I think the rise of NC State has been something that's been like really incredible to see and obviously with having a few Brits on the team shout out you know like it's it's been amazing for us to see and um yeah I mean especially having like the British coaches like I heard them chatting when they were out here and I was like oh wow, you know it's really cool but how do you think they created that culture with NC State I know you mentioned that they you go through the history of the what you guys have managed to do but how have they managed to ingrain this well winning culture within the NC State I mean I think it's very I'd like to say disciplined I know Dave is a big fan of that word um I think you talk about kind of teams and kind of what you the identity I'm gonna throw that out there um there we go yeah identity um and I think we are very much we're very structured um there's a lot of expectations and just kind of like you know you work hard you prepare well and then you go on the match court you know exactly what's going to happen it's not like anything is a surprise for us we know exactly what we're going to do we know exactly what we're going to try and execute and it's just a question of on the day can we do it or not yeah. it's not kind of a question of well what are we going to do you know there's no you know yeah, yeah. we know exactly what we do when we walk out there and I think Simon has definitely Simon and Dave have put a lot of effort into that you know they've put a lot of work into building a system and a culture that um I mean it's been extremely successful Mm -hmm. but it is very easy and it's also very easy for new people to come in because you know you just know there's no kind of confusion you know exactly what you're expected to do you're helped every step of the way and how to do that so it's uh, for me I really I really like that um so yeah I think NC State's identity is definitely something that I think they spent a lot of time and effort in um so I mean hopefully when we walk on the court you can see that no definitely I mean, you guys are all suit that you were from what I just saw out here like you're all very confident you kind of go on knowing that like okay we're pretty good you know and your coaches seem to be very well like you said like disciplined with you guys and they I remember one of them was um being like no you know you need to play this way don't try and stray away from it and I was like <laughs> I was like okay so like they've obviously built up that confidence uh within you guys and I think that's I think that's amazing to see okay so we spoke about how the coaches have ingrained this sort of culture within NC State of making the girls feel confident I think that's really interesting that you said that when you go out on the court 
you obviously you know what you're gonna do you know how you're gonna play um I think that's amazing that's something that I think a lot of well I know I've struggled with in the past of being like okay like it's kind of overwhelming being out there as a pressure of like wanting to win and mm-hmm. maybe you know how you want to play but your coaches have obviously worked really hard with you guys on that so how is the team as well? Because, I mean, it takes two to tango, am I right? So how is the team in, in making that culture just as special as it has been? <clears throat> I mean, it does. There is kind of, it is a two-way street. Um, they give us all the information. Um, it's a lot. Uh, and then it's kind of just a question of applying yourself. Because you're given all the resources to succeed. It's just, you know, whether um, you can apply yourself in the right way. Obviously, with people on team it takes people have different pathways you know Mm -hmm. um you know you not some people catch it like catch on better than others some people takes a bit more time it's fine but I think there is a big I think for us it is just a lot of kind of making sure that as long as you are applying yourself in the right way then you know pressure's off you know you know you're trying to do the right thing even if it might not work first time like no big deal as long as you are going in the right direction, we're fine. And I think that is kind of for us, especially when you walk on the court with a team, you know, I have a lot of faith that everyone out there is going to try and apply themselves. You know, you know what they're going to do. Is it, it makes it a lot easier to support each other as well. Yeah. You're going to have that kind of confidence in each other that, okay, we've done this in practice four days this week and now we're going to go out and we're going to execute it and you know exactly what each other are going to do um and it yeah it just makes it a lot easier it makes it a lot simpler um but no definitely I mean team dynamics are hard so oh are hard. wow yeah <clears throat> mm-hmm. I mean when oh. you first came like how would you say that the seniors were with you because I think that's is there you mentioned there that like there's there's not really that pressure being like, okay, you have to win for us to like respect you in a sense. Because I know like a lot of times it can feel like that, especially coming yeah. in. But you were pretty cool there. You were like, yeah, as long as you know that everyone's trying to do the right thing and trying to push with some. Yeah, I think it's, for me, it's very overwhelming being on that team. And kind of, I remember like the first time I lost like a clinching. Yeah. I've coach Dave said this to me I think it will forever stay with me he was like you know this is not your fault you are the last person out here because you were out here fighting for the longest time this is not you know people lost before you did it just ha- so happened that you were the last match mm-hmm. I think that stuck with me throughout college like I said that I remember we just played indoors um and Maddie lost in she freshman in to Michigan and mm-hmm. I was like look I know how this feels I was myself my sophomore year I was when we lost to UNC I was the country and yeah. I said you know I completely I know exactly how you feel like this is overwhelming you know you, you're upset you feel like people blame you but you are out here because you were out here like fighting for the longest not because any of this is like on you um and I think that was a massive part of college is kind of taking away that pointing fingers you should never point fingers at anyone like you guys are out there fighting for the same thing um so I think for us when, you know, everything is there and we see it, then it kind of takes away, okay, well, you kind of start to judge people based on, okay, did you do what is expected or did you, you know, stray away from that? And that is is a very, you know, you know exactly what is expected. So uh, the coaches say it like, you know, if you lose the way we tell you to play, like that's that's on us. And that is huge for me because I think it took a lot of the pressure off me because I always felt like, you know, so I'm doing something wrong, I'm whatever. But they were like, you know, if we tell you to do something and you lose, then it's on us. I know that's a massive thing for coaches to take that kind of responsibility. Um, it's a big thing, you know. Playing college is, is scary, especially when you're a freshman. No, definitely. I think that was that was really wonderfully said. Good job. Sarah. Yeah, good job. Yeah, no, I think that's amazing. Like you said, uh, they kind of share the accountability as well, as well as reassuring you and letting you know that it is okay. And I mean, you are well it's very rare that you're gonna win every single match and like to have to share that with the team I mean one of our big ones is you win as a team you lose as a team and I think that's something that's like I think it takes into goes to freshmen a lot because I think they can take it pretty personally like a lot of stuff like that 
Um, yeah, because I mean, it's completely different for them. You know, they juniors yeah. match, and you know, you go home, cry in your car with your mum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not. It's not the same. It's not the same thing. No, a thousand it's percent. Hard. But then also, you're reminded of it. You know, I see teams post about wins. I'm like, like you know, you you can't get away from it, especially with college. You know, it's everywhere. Um, yeah. So I do think you know the team team dynamic is it it, it has its positives and it has its negatives you know you know yeah. you win together it's great and then you lose yeah. it's like oh my yeah. god no definitely and you know as we spoke about we're both seniors now Oof. Tough, tough, tough. but how would you describe your differences from being a freshman to being a senior because I know for me as a freshman I was. I was probably really annoying. Yeah, I was probably really annoying. I was like very much ride or die on that tennis court. I was very win based and yeah, I just had no real idea about college tennis or anything like that. And now as a senior, it's kind of come into it and I'm like, okay, like this is the team dynamic. I can't just blow up or lose my head like that because it affects everyone else and just Mm -hmm. I've taken on I would say personally, not to brag, or like responsibility and accountability for myself and for my others, for my others, for my teammates. So how would uh-huh. you describe your differences? If there has been any, maybe you just came in rock solid, you know what I mean? No, I did not. I was a mess as a freshman. I will be the first to admit that. <laughs> Simon likes to remind me of that. You were like this as a freshman. I know. Thank you yeah. for complaining about other people. You were like that. Yes, I was. I will say. Mm-hmm. They are very humbling, my coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, as a freshman, I mean, I had no clue what I was signing myself up for. Um, I think, I mean, if I, if as a freshman, I said, I, if I told myself I would be in the position I am now as a senior, I generally would not. That would be a far, mm-hmm. far chance of that happen. Like, it was not going to happen. Um, so I do, I look back senior me I will say senior I think leadership can take it like a form in many ways you know there's a lot of different types of leaders I would like to say I lead by example I'm not about to go down there and run my mouth because I don't want to do that I just want to go on that tennis court and play tennis you know I will work hard do everything they tell me to do and that is how I lead you know I think on our team we have different leaders and that's fine but that I would say is kind of my role. And now that I see it, it's way easier. Like I just do it. I'm just going to go out there. I'm going to work hard. You know, that is how you can, I think, you know, teach a lot. Um, <laughs> so yeah, freshman me, very British. I feel like I have hopefully moved away from some of the British tendencies. America has taught me how really? to be a winner. Come on, give an example. Yeah. Come on. I mean, I just feel Nothing like Brits, either, yeah. Brits, you know, we do like to look at the negative side of things. That's true. Um, that is true, yeah. And I've, you know, my coaches have a saying. Plucky British loser. They used to call me that as a freshie. And I didn't like it at first. But you know what? Then I thought, you guys trying to help me, I'm going to take on this. That kind of way of thinking. Mm-hmm. I mean, Americans... It is different, the culture mm-hmm. here, you know, everybody's I've watched some of them and they play horrendous and they walk off with so much confidence. I'm shocked. If that was me, I'd be like, oh god, god, I can't believe just done that. No. And I think I've learned to kind of let that go and kind of let some of that mm-hmm. and just impending doom. Mm-hmm. It's not. I think then I when I let that go, I was like, you know what, actually it's not that scary. Yeah. It is cool you kind of take away a lot of that expectation expectation, and then, you know, the pressure's off. And I think that is something, hopefully, mm-hmm. as a freshman, I don't have any more. Because you do, you know, as a freshman, you think, oh, my God, this is going to yeah. go wrong. This is going to be terrible. No. You know what? It's actually not um, that deep. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. Like, I hate that saying because it makes me like, ugh. But, like, it's, it, actually, it, but it's, not it's not that deep. It's not that deep. I, like, I was the same, I remember as, like, freshman – Winning or losing, like there was just a massive snowball effect. The end of the world, like, oh yeah. It's not. It's yeah, not, I think my coaches did a great job with me. They kind of, they, things would happen, and they'd say 
they told me things that were necessary to tell me, but it did hurt at first. But then actually I come back 24 hours later and I'm like, you know what, you you guys are right. You know, uh, they, they've they helped me a lot in kind of maturing. Uh, as much as they do irritate me with what they say sometimes, you know, it is the right thing. Uh, um, and I think that has just kind of pushed my development and kind of, it is uncomfortable sometimes, you know, you are, especially a senior year, you know, you have to deal with things that you don't want to deal with um, because unfortunately that falls on you. And it is a lot, but I think, you know, in, in life, unfortunately, we are going to have to deal with these things at some point. May as well start now. So that is my... Dad, look at you. Um, just oh God, just coming out of the place. Right now. They must have done a really good job, like, with you guys like that I really respect that mindset that you have with it all mm-hmm. I think that's pretty cool but let's talk yeah. about your success now let's toot mm-hmm. your horn here let's talk about your success so freshman mm-hmm. year I'd just like to say as well the fact that you came in freshman year and <clears throat> you got the accolades that you did you defeated the number one ranked North Carolina in doubles with your partner Abigail let me know if I say this wrong Abigail Rencelli is that right yes perfect and you finished at number 70 in doubles according to their ITA doubles rankings. That's super impressive to come in freshman year and get to the year final. was a blur, I'm going to be honest. Now I look yeah. back. No, but like <laughs> the, the fact that you've managed to do that is super impressive. Yeah. And then sophomore year, you made your NCAA doubles championships debut. And then you finished the season ranked number 22 nationally in dubs and you reached a career best number 18 ranking during the regular season. And then junior year, that's when it all started Mm -hmm. popping off, really. My gosh. We posted, I say we, I mean this as well. No, just kidding. We posted a 14 and 11 record in singles and 34 to 14 record in doubles during the season. This meant that you shattered the program record of most single wins, single season wins at 40, four mm-hmm. most double season wins in program history with 34. ITA, there we yeah. go. <laughs> all American in both singles and doubles, all ACC, ACC All Academic, and ACC Academic Honor Roll. Academic weapon right here. Yeah, I mean, my gosh. I mean, my gosh. You have it all going on. I mean, your success there has been, like, honestly, it's been incredible. Like, when I was looking these up and, like, looking at your stats, I was just like, I was telling the girls who all over, I was like, you know, she posted a 40 and 11 record. I was like, looking at it, like, oh my. Like, it's so impressive and that's amazing. But obviously, with that success, how, how do you deal with that? And, like, has it changed you? No, I'm just kidding. But not kidding. But <laughs> in it, has it changed you? But like the pressure, do you face more pressure now? Do you play with more pressure on you? How would you? How do you describe your your meteoric mm-hmm. rise? Some might say. I mean, last year, it was I won a lot, but it was we obviously we had D played one. D mm-hmm. night. She's top hundred now. Yeah, she's not she- bad. Yeah. She's not bad at tennis. She can hit a tennis ball. Mm-hmm. And obviously Alana was two. So mm-hmm. I won a lot, but it was kind of it wasn't the same kind of pressure I have now playing one. It was like three, I would I did my job, you know, went mm-hmm. on the court, did the business, and mm-hmm. it was all good. Um and it was I didn't really get the attention probably I'm getting now, which was kind of nice because obviously going from sophomore year. I kind of had my struggles and then for it to kind of all fall into place my junior year was, was very was was really nice um you know I put a lot of effort I put a lot of work in especially over that summer and I was kind of just waiting for it to click and then it did the mm-hmm. way it did I didn't expect it to be like that um but also our team our season was a bit strange last year with our team you know we kind of had the heartbreak of not making indoors um so you, we kind of built up this whole expectation for our season and then it kind of was like, oh, we kind of need to reevaluate where this is going. Um, so our season did have its up and, ups and downs um, and it was very long, very long season. But I think the kind of pressures are different now. It's the ranking I never really thought about it. Um, mm-hmm. You just kind of see it and it's, oh, you know, that's nice. 
but now it's kind of like you've I do kind of feel there's more of a target on me because mm. I go out and play these teams every week and it's like okay I'm ranked whatever mm. there's kind of an expectation that you beat these people and I kind of I never had to deal with that before it was kind of like oh you know she's playing three you mm. know she might win she might not whatever now there's kind of like that you know oh she should win and yeah. it, it, it's a different pressure um but I feel, you know, that season kind of prepared me for that kind of mental. So I, my coach is kind of, we have like uh, end of year meetings, start of year meetings, whatever. And they were like, you know, playing higher in the lineup is mentally, it's physically challenging, but it's also mentally challenging. Cause you know, you kind of, when I played lower in the lineup, I had some tough matches and then some matches were kind of easier. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas now playing one, there are no easy matches. Yeah. You know, no matter what team you play, whether I play UNC, whether I play, you know, double header against somebody, those matches are never easy. Mm-hmm. And people are always out to get you. Like, you know, they have the chance. I play teams in like, you know, playing number three. I was thinking like three. Playing number three player in college, you know, not many people get the opportunity. So people are like, they're out to get you mm. and you know it is it, very different this year for me um but I feel I kind of last year kind of prepared me for that um because I played a lot I kind of I managed to kind of or I think I managed to kind of deal with those mental challenges kind of better than I thought I would and this year it's kind of just trying to build off that mm-hmm. but just the pressure of one is it's a different game you know Mm-hmm. And I respect anyone that plays one because it's a hard job. Uh, two right it is, two right it is. But, you know, you just mentioned that you had a very good season last year. I mean, that was very, very impressive. But you mm-hmm. said that you had these meetings and there was that chat of, okay, you're going to play higher up in the lineup, hopefully. That was the aim. And you spoke about how the pressure is different now. How does that correlate with your matches, you know, with the nerves? Do you get them more or difficulties within matches? How do you deal with that? <clears throat> because I think the environment you play in is like there's, there's, there's a lot going on, I think. Yeah. I mean, nerves are always there. Um, and it's... It's kind of strange because sometimes, like in these environments, like when we played indoors, um, I kind of went into like, autopilot. It was almost like you know I've been in this position before. I know I this environment. I kind of thrive. I do like the college environment. Yeah. I will interact with that crowd if that ah. crowd is liking me. You know I'm going to interact with them. So it is. I I do like that. For some people, it they doesn't. You know, college is is a lot of like stimulus kind of going on. Yeah and it's hard to deal with mm-hmm. but I do the the more I've played in those environments I mean Dave says all the time you know the more you're on that stage the easier it gets mm-hmm. and kind of I feel like now you know we've been very fortunate to be on those big stages in college tennis um it does get easier every time because there is a sort of familiarity familiar comes there it is yeah don't worry yeah you know what I'm saying like like playing for example playing at UNC the first time I played them oh my god you know you kind of yeah. overthink it. it's this massive thing but then the more times you play them you realize actually it's not this massive thing that you built up in your head and you do kind of start to see that finish line and it does become more you know we can do this um so I do think college is a lot you know that's why experience is massive yeah. you know we're very fortunate to have four players on our team this year that played in the NCAA final last year yeah. not many not many teams have that kind of experience on their team mm. and it is massive you mm. know in those time moments you know I've been here before I know exactly what's going to happen I'm chill which is definitely what me sophomore year playing indoors versus me playing indoors this year com- two completely different people I mean, let's just talk about that big time win. Whoa, against you. And- <laughs> that was huge. I mean, I think that's really interesting that you say that. I was just about to say that, like, experience, it sounds like experience has been something that's been massive for you, like the differences and how you've dealt with things and how it's just become, like, routine for you now. Mm-hmm. I mean, hopefully, you know, as as I said, you know, NC State's success is not 
something that spans 50 years this is something that is very recent and again we're still you know learning and Mm -hmm. um I mean Simon and Dave have division two you know Simon won a lot of national championships in division two exactly so he you know they they know exactly kind of what these fish uh you know matches are like but for us it is a lot of learning and you're kind of you're I think the more, obviously, the more you play those types of matches, the better the results are going to be. You know, I know we took a, it was a heartbreaker last year in Stablaze, but hopefully, you know, we get that chance again. We've been in that position before. It's not as overwhelming. It's not as scary. Yeah. Next time you go and do it, you know, you have a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, experience is huge in college, which is why, you know, seniors, you do kind of tend to see the the upperclassmen higher in the lineup because they've yeah. they've been there before and they know they've done it really too right too right we spoke about as well when you were a freshman how you didn't see yourself achieving well not necessarily achieving but being where you are now so when you first came to NT State what was the original goal there were you just kind of like, I just want to play or or was that yeah, no yeah. I mean I didn't really have me I didn't really didn't really think that far ahead I'll be honest I was more taking it one year at a time Mm -hmm. I was trying to get through my first year Mm -hmm. um so I didn't I generally I also again I didn't understand kind of the college you know like Insta Blaze you know the criteria of making the Insta Blaze tournament what it meant you know whatever I didn't understand that um so for me it was I, I was just a lot of learning my freshman year and then the more I kind of understood it and I saw it I was like you know what that looks pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I think kind of my idea changed. And then when it finally clicked and I was like, okay, this is not too, you know, not too aspirational for me. You know, this mm-hmm. is actually, you know, possibly achievable. Then you, those goals become more real and you can kind of start to to see it a bit more. With these goals, you, say, you keep saying like when it clicks, did you ever have, did you have any moments where you're just kind of like, I just don't know if it's going to click? Like any doubt, I suppose. My, I, people, it's funny because, you know, I have people on my team now that come to me and say, you know, I'm struggling with this. But that yeah. was me. Freshman yeah. year, sophomore year. Oh my God. My sophomore year. Oh. If you could have seen some of the matches I played, my God. You would be, Millie, what the hell are you doing? I remember I, it got like, I wasn't even supposed to play my sophomore year. Unfortunately, you know, one of the people on our team got injured. So I kind of got the opportunity to play, which was not what I was you know expecting um and I played and uh, the first half of the season I went to indoors I went 0-3 in singles I lost lost straight sets and then I lost I was down 5-0 in the third came mm. back lost in five in the third Dave was literally telling me just make it to the next change events just make ah. it to the next try and stay out here as long as possible took the L seven five in the third <laughs> then heartbreaker to UNC 6-4 mm. so also 5 and the third I was serving at 5-4 it's all right it happens it happens don't worry it happens. and I think as hard as it is and as awful in those main moments as it felt for me it did you know it taught me a lot because as much as of the success I have now mm. I have experienced that you know rock yeah. bottom yeah. and I know it's there because I have been there but I also know that I I can deal with it Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, people, there's this fall, but it's like, I'm I'm good because I have felt that before. And I know that I can su- survive that because I did my yeah. sophomore year. Um, and it was, you know, it's hard because sometimes, you know, you're looking around. It's very, I think in college, it's very easy to compare yourself to others because obviously, yeah. you know, you're in a team, you know, and you do start to think, okay, well, this person is doing a bit better than me. And it's kind of, it was... I, you know I I went through that I was kind of like when is this you know when am I going to start seeing these results and it was it was hard for a long time um but then sort of to the towards the end of that sophomore year I just the confidence kind of grew yeah. on the court I felt way more comfortable mm-hmm. I think my, I like the first part was so uncomfortable on the court you know it's kind of that dread of oh my god I have to play mm-hmm. which it's a far cry from how I feel now um but kind of I went through that and it was a lot of 
my my freshman year I didn't play singles right so mm-hmm. didn't go on the singles court for a long time and I feel like I kind of lost as, as cheesy as I kind of lost who I was on the court yeah. I had this like kind of identity crisis and I was like you know I've completely forgotten what I used to play like because it's been a long time and I did a lot of work with sports psych um that sophomore year with MJ shout out to MJ she uh, MJ, yeah. so much um and she kind of she told me this like everyone has a cookie recipe right so you have a recipe everyone likes a different cookie it's your own recipe whatever you like but everyone's recipe is different and you have to know exactly when you walk on that court what that recipe is going to be. So mine was like, you know, I'm going to be loud. Yeah. I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to breathe. I've got to be relaxed. And like I went on that court every time and I was like, right, these are my four things I'm going to do. I'm going to go out there and breathe. I don't care how it goes, but I'm going to make sure I do those four things. And I think that was huge for me. It was a kind of a lot. I'm just trying to find myself again, which hopefully now my I, I have formed an identity. I do like uh-huh. to shout a lot. Sorry if it annoys other people. No, no, don't apologize. Yeah. <laughs> so that was definitely sophomore year was a lot of navigating kind of the stuff I maybe missed out on as a freshman um, mm-hmm. and kind of learning what works and kind of getting used to that kind of different, different vibes of college because mm. it was different. That's actually, that's a really good attitude to have. I think that's super impressive that you were able to just you kind of didn't let it you know you got through it and you know that made you stronger and you learned from it and I think you, I think with college you have to be able to adapt and be willing to definitely get the tough moments to be like okay we go again because it it doesn't really stop like you do just play matches week in week out and yeah, like we don't get a break from it and also now I feel like when I have um I'm a freshman on the team now come to me with these problems I've I've been through that and I feel like it does help me a lot when I talk to them because I'm like I know exactly how you feel it's very yeah. easy for coaches to try and tell you but you know they don't haven't necessarily been in that position yeah. whereas I have and I know exactly how it feels and you know I can relate mm-hmm. so this kind of takes I feel like I hopefully it mm-hmm. reassures me a bit more but you know I know exactly what you feel like you know and you're like oh it's good and it's nice to know I mean my freshman year I didn't really talk about it as much yeah I was like you know I had that attitude I can do it on my own yeah 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 that's the same yeah it's a pride thing as well you know you have you have to talk to others about it because at the end of the day you can't deal with all these problems on your own you have to a problem shared and a problem halved you know I love that, that yeah I love that, that no, was me. That's it, right that was me so hopefully it a lot. No, but that's, that's amazing I'm really glad that you're saying all this mm-hmm. stuff I think like it's really important that people know that and obviously some of your success like to hear you talk about that and be open about talking about these things it's, it's huge so yeah. well done but you know this is the most important question do you have a pre-match routine or a pre-match song let me hear it song now song i gotta stick okay i go through phases with songs mm. depends the, the the vibes right recently i went through because you know being in america i've got to listen to american rap there so, we go <laughs> yes i want to listen to it so you know who i started listening to yeah Dave and Stormzy, you know I listen to them on repeat. I see you sharing Stormzy a lot, to be fair, and I'm like, my oh, God, I've never Stormzy. met someone who likes Stormzy as much as you, to be fair. Oh, love Stormzy. Mm-hmm. Stormzy and Dave, mm-hmm. love them. Mm-hmm. So, Sprinter recently, I don't know, Guilty Pleasure, Sprinter. Oh, it's, it's a hype song. I know you're judging me, I know you're judging me, hype song. But it, yeah, I'm saying it depends on the on the mood. Let me see. My Spotify playlists are great, guys. If you okay. ever, if you ever need any songs, oh, Sprinter. That's actually that's yeah. Everyone follow Amelia on Spotify. Yeah, do you know what I've listened to recently? Murder on the dance floor. That's a classic. From Salt. Oh yeah. yeah, I have a little freshy friend Gabby. I feel like we listen to quite some of the music. We're always rocking out in the car. Mm-hmm. I did introduce Simon to some British rap. I don't think he was very. He wasn't into it. Okay, yeah. He yeah. wanted to listen to some Yorkshire rap, which I don't know if that even exists. Yorkshire rap. I actually don't. I don't even know if that exists. And then pre-match routine, we always eat Panera, and then oh, <laughs> yeah, I always eat Panera. Always a nice smoothie, and yeah. then I always re-grip my rackets. I'm a massive snob for white grips. I'm sorry oh. if, if I've touched that grip before. I don't want to use it before I walk onto a match. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
respect I think I've went I've gone through like so many grips this semester I'm really sorry but I've I mean through... you gotta do what you gotta do don't feel guilty about it exactly gotta do what you gotta do, you gotta do, what you gotta do. So through, yeah I regrip all my rackets gotta be nicely ready for the match oh, that's good. But, yeah Mm -hmm. So what's next then? What is next for you? So we're graduating soon. What are your plans? Is it Pro Tour, Masters? What's going on? I don't think I'm a crack at it, you know. I feel like it'll be right. As you should. You, I mean, you've already got a pro title, right? Um, yes, I've got a couple. Got a few? Come on, tell us about them. Yeah. You know? Um. I've actually been looking at it recently because I have had to face the music that I will no longer be in college. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have been looking. I'm definitely going to go back to England. Oh, you are? Definitely. Uh, yes. I've been speaking to universities in England about the prospect of, you know, maybe doing a master's, maybe not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm definitely looking down that route because I do like the university vibes and the facilities are great. Mm. So right now... Bath or Loughborough is looking like the two options. Um, so I feel like I'm going through the recruiting process again. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, talking to coaches, what can you offer? Mm, all that again. Oh, yeah. But now, second time through, I'm a little bit more aware. You know, yeah. it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. So I think definitely go back. It's it's hard coming out of college. You've yeah. got to, you know, you have all this support around you, and then yeah. suddenly it's taken away, and you've got to. Oof, work out how to do it on your own mm -hmm. big shock so I'm trying to prepare myself as well as I can for that transition so yeah. hopefully kind of being in an environment that's similar it's not going to be the same but it's pretty similar I can hopefully have that same support system and obviously I've got to try and find those people so you're looking and at going also... back home getting your masters at a uni there potentially just... masters who potentially, knows potentially, know. but mainly just as you should give it a crack on the pro tour. I mean, like you said, you've got oh, a few titles under your belt. And you're doing very well. You're doing very well. I don't know anyone that can hit a 400 as big as you. I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> I don't, I don't. It's so, that's the four end of us. Hmm. Hmm? What? I what? said being I said the forehand is supposed to be in English. I feel like most English people we struggle with the backhands in England. They don't teach backhands very well in England. I was just about to say. I was just about to say. You know, just struggle, <laughs> right? No, yeah, I was about to say, yeah, back, backhand is... <laughs> I have traumatised Dave with my backhand slice. He will not, like, let me hit a backhand slice anymore. He's traumatised. Oh, really? He's not into that? That's tough. Mine is so bad. It's awful. Really? Really? I can't, well, he says it's bad. I, I have a little bit of respect for my backhand slice. It's not, it's not as good as yours. I've seen yours. Mine! It's because <laughs> I can't. It's because I can't, can't hit. I've seen the chip. I've seen the chip in charge. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> Chelsea was telling me about it. I've seen it. Chelsea was, yeah. She, she, she's my biggest supporter, that girl. She is, she is. But... Exactly. No, I've not that level yet. I'm working on it though. Well, there's always time to improve, isn't there, Amelia? Mm -hmm. That could be the new tactic, chip and charge. See the end suppose. Gosh, you're making me blush now. Yeah, actually. <laughs> right, I'm moving on, moving on, moving on. But no, I think everyone support Amelia on her pro tour. Pathway. I think that's really, I'm really excited to see what you do next with that. You have five minutes remaining. Okay, what let's go. Two moments at NC State and why they were so special. Top three ACC win last year. Yeah, huge okay. buzz. Mm -hmm. Got the ring. Mm -hmm. I That crowd was unbelievable. It was yeah, I so bet. Mm -hmm. I absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. The girl I played missed an overhead, bounce overhead on top of the net set point. The crowd went wild i loved it mm -hmm. two probably postseason last year like the whole insta blaze like the singles event as well yeah. very long but i think you know i just i had i felt i had felt no pressure you yeah. know it's like first time playing singles tournament whatever happens happens mm -hmm. chill spent a lot of time in orlando I was going me and nell and i were going crazy oh my yeah. god time i get taken us to the same restaurant every night oh, i really just, Oh, we were we were going wild there. It was crazy, but it was fun. We did okay. have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And then, I'd say indoors this year because if I compare oh, no. it to my indoors as a sophomore, mm -hmm. I've, I went zero and three as a sophomore. Awful. Mm -hmm. And then I went three and zero now. Full circle moment, you know. That is I, that's true. Yeah, well done. 
So I do think it's nice to, for me when I look back and I think, okay, if you would have said to me, okay, you're senior year, you're going to go three and zero at one mm-hmm. against best teams in the country, I would not believe you. So that it was a nice full moment for me to walk away from that thinking, you know, it's nice. I could I see the growth. I see I'm the growth. Playing nine one as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's, but... Yeah, that's top. That's top. That. Mm. So top moments there. I like those. Those are pretty good. I like that. Okay, mm-hmm. so finally, have you got a question for the next person on the podcast to answer? I'm could really boring. Any- could be anything. I'm going to say, do they go to college? Are they college? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What is the most interesting class you've taken in college? Thank you for listening to Amelia and I in the inaugural episode of the ITA Student Athlete Podcast. If you enjoyed the conversation, we ask that you follow the ITA on social media or check out the ITA website at wearecollegetennis.com to make sure you don't miss out on any college tennis updates. I look forward to bringing you more conversations with student athletes in the months to come and hope to shine a light on the diverse array of personalities our sport has to offer. I'd also like to announce the ITA's partnership with Zama, an app made for student athletes and their mental health. And thank you again for listening.